Hello, and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here, and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. I'm joined, as always, by my partner in reading, Claire. Thank you, Kirstra. I'm Claire. I moderate the As the Page Turns and also our historical group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And And now we have a special guest with us today. Very special guest. Hi, I'm Betsy, and I am fairly new to the adult programming department, and I'm excited to announce that we are starting a new book club, and we're meeting in October on Monday nights. The name of the book club is Good Start Book Club. It's Mm -hmm. a good way to start your week. And we'll be discussing um, on, can I, are we ready for this? Yeah, by all means. Um, So at our first meeting, we'll be discussing The House of Broken Angels by Louis Alberto Urea. And at, we will go forward um, with selections for the next six months. There's going to be a mixed genre. We're going to have some biographies, some uh, contemporary fiction, some mm-hmm. historical fiction, and then uh, after six months, we'll vote on our upcoming selections. Awesome. awesome. Yep. And you're meeting here at the library, right? Yes, we're going to meet yeah. in the story and craft room, which is a, in the uh, children's room in the story mm-hmm. garden, and it's a nice warm space, so I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Very exciting. Um, so folks who are interested in joining Good Start Book Club, you can register for that October meeting right online on our program calendar, or give us a call and we can help you sign up over the phone. Yep, and we have books um, behind the Cirque desk mm-hmm. and we ha- the, it is available on Libby as well. Awesome, yes. very helpful. So you're gonna be joining us to talk about some books today mm-hmm. that you've read. Can you tell us a little bit about what kind of things you like to read when you're not running book clubs? Sure, um, I like to read, if I'm reading fiction, I like to read um, family stories. Mm. I love books that span decades and talk about all the characters and all their complex relationships. Um, I like books with a really well-developed sense of place. Mm. Um, Sometimes it can be an actual building that is almost a character itself. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Um, And... I also like to read nonfiction. Um, Mm -hmm. I have a problem with cookbooks. (laughs) (laughs) You're in very good company here with that. And I like, you know, self-help books and books based on science and Mm -hmm. um, all sorts of things. Sounds good. Cool. Um, Would you rather start us off with one of the books that you brought or would you rather want us start and you jump in? Why don't you start? All All right. Claire. All right. I'm going to start, and I'm going right down the dark hole, people. <laughs> We're starting dark. I've got Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Crosby. Um, I really like this book, and I listen to it, which is unusual for me. It is available on Hoopla with no wait time, so mm-hmm. if you want to read it, you're going to be able to jump right in. But um, the story is about pretty much one man. His name is Beauregard Montage. He is a husband, a father, a son, a business owner. He's also the best getaway car driver east of the Mississippi. Um, So he thought he had left his life of crime behind, but he's out of time for the mortgage payment on his garage. Business is slow. His youngest needs braces. His mom needs money to stay in the retirement home. Uh, His back is pretty much against the wall. So a former associate who is covered in Elvis tattoos and just got out of jail comes up with a great idea for a can't-miss jewelry heist, which is diamonds. And he needs a driver. And lo and behold, Bugs succumbs to the siren song and is just convinced that this one more gig is going to get him out of all his personal troubles. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know it's not. It's all going down in flames, right? Otherwise it would be a very short book. (laughs) That's right. So um, the thing about that I really loved about this is Bug is a complex character. He is that family man. His father was also a getaway driver and left them abruptly. His mother never got over it. And so he's kind of struggling because he loves it. He loves the adrenaline rush. There is absolutely nothing like it. He is a meticulous planner. He does all kinds of crazy things in here, but everything is timed and he knows what he's doing. Um, So there's this kind of back and forth for him as to 
am I good? Am I bad? Like mm-hmm. I have children, I have family, like what are my responsibilities? Um, and I, I really enjoyed that. Um, so the dark, the novel is very dark. It's gritty. It's got, you know, some really bad language, which of course is not a problem for me, but <laughs> it may be for some of you. Um, I really liked it. It was action packed. You come to know Beauregard, AKA bug and all his demons. Um, and the narrator on Hoopla did a fantastic job, mm. like whoever narrated this book. Um, so you, if you were in the mood for some Southern noir, and I, I actually had to look up how to say that, people, um, <laughs> pick up this book. So, And noir is a genre of crime fiction, mm-hmm. which characters have some fatalism mm-hmm. and moral ambiguity. Absolutely. So there you have it. Nice. Black Top Wasteland. Well, that sounds excellent. I loved it. And if, if you remember, I also have read another one by him called Razorblade mm-hmm. Tears. Same narrator does that. That is also on Hoopla. So I might re-listen. I read that one, mm-hmm. but I might listen to it just because I liked him so much. Nice. So. Um, and did you know that you can generally search by narrators oh, in I Libby and Hoopla? That, yeah. Yeah. So for everyone out there, because a good narrator really does make a huge difference. Yeah. For sure. Nice. Um, All right. I will go next. Um, So the book that I'm going to talk about is actually one of my kind of leftovers from Sci-Fi September. So I I read it and then I decided I wanted to talk about other things more, but I still really liked it. And it is The Unfamiliar Garden by Benjamin Percy. Um, And I actually broke one of my personal rules reading this book, which is that it's the second book in the series, and I did not read the first book. But in my defense, I did not realize it was the second book in the series when I picked it up. Um, But the nice thing is, so the, the series is called The Comet Cycle, and they're not necessarily like sequential books, like you don't have to read them in order. They're mostly just different stories set in the same kind of world. Mm -hmm. Um, And this world is a version of our world. So it's set in the United States. And the basic premise is that um, there's a huge comet and it doesn't hit the earth. It goes by, but like close enough that it was an amazing light show and everybody was like comet crazy. It was this amazing like phenomenon right all the photographers were out taking photos right you and all of your friends um (laughs) and then a year goes by and then the earth passes through the trail of the comet so where the comet passed there's all of this comet debris still left and the earth just kind of hurdles itself right through and there's all of these then like meteor showers and like just um so it wasn't like extinction level like the calculating stars but enough to do some real serious damage Mm -hmm. so our main characters are jack and nora abernathy um they're a married couple living in seattle jack is a biologist who studies fungus and mushrooms and nora is a cop and on um like comet day so the day that this kind of devastating meteor shower happens Um, Jack has taken their small daughter with him to drive out into the woods to investigate um, this fungus that somebody reported. So part of his job at the university is to go out and look into stuff when they get calls. Um, And while Jack is out investigating and mushroom hunting, his daughter disappears. Oh, dear. So flash forward five years. um, Jack and Nora's marriage has not survived their daughter's disappearance. She has never been found. Um, And the meteor showers have changed the climate in the U.S. so that Seattle has been in a five-year drought. So no rain in the Pacific Northwest for five years. Um, But as we pick the story back up again, the climate's finally starting to readjust itself and the rains have returned. So um, Jack gets another call about some sort of mysterious fungus for the first time in five years because it's been too dry for anything mm-hmm. to grow. So he goes out to investigate and realizes that the place where the complaint happened is basically the same place where his daughter disappeared. So that's, you know, one mystery. 
And then Nora, who has become like this extreme kind of hermit germaphobe cop, (laughs) um, gets called to this very bizarre murder scene um, that seems to have some kind of unnatural elements to it. Hmm. So she starts investigating that, and he's investigating this fungus, and wouldn't you know it, there end up being some connections between the two mysteries, because that's how books go. So I don't want to spoil too much. It gets, um, it's a very, very fast moving book. Like, I think I read this in like a day and a half. And it's not a long book. It's little, but it really moves. Um, and at the end, it gets um, quite action-y. Um, not quite die hard, but like a little sci-fi action-y at the end, but it was really intriguing, um, a different kind of science fiction than what I usually Mm -hmm. read. Um, And I would say still kind of sci-fi light because it's, it's- um, Sounds like sci-fi mystery. Yeah, yeah, And we love a good murder mystery. We do. And And well, and relatable sci-fi. Absolutely, and then you've also got the family dynamics and the family drama going on. Climate. Um, Climate Which all of change. Us are thinking about. Absolutely. So, highly recommend. I am going to go back and read the first book, which is called The Ninth Metal. Um, is it the same characters, like the policewoman? I or? think there might be like some secondary characters that overlap, okay. but the main characters are not the same okay. between the different books, which is part of why I kept reading after I realized it was not the first book in a series. Um, so yeah, Unfamiliar Garden by Benjamin Percy. I might have to read that one. It was good. I really, I was surprised how much I liked it. So, okay. all right, all right. Over to you, Betsy. Over to me. All right. Well, let's start with a biography, a big biography. <laughs> Chunky. So I went to pick out some of my favorite books, and I realized a lot of my very favorite books are big doorstop books but I think it's almost because I become so invested in the characters and the stories so um Julia Child is definitely someone who's worth being invested in she has she's led an extraordinary life um just very interesting but what really struck me most about her is that she is just very authentic Mm. to herself she is tall and awkward and gangly as she's growing up and she owns it and she just follows her own path and her path leads her to work for I think it's a secret service Mm -hmm. during World War II where she meets her husband and then they end up in Paris and she is an abysmal cook apparently (laughs) and is just interested and wants to develop and wants to become a good be able to cook a good dinner and attend school and just hits everything at the right time mm-hmm. to become the um, celebrity that we know her as. Um, so this book I would recommend for anyone who likes cooking, history, um, a good love story, and um, anyone who's looking to be more authentic who wants that inspiration for themselves. So it's um, Deary, The Remarkable Life of Julia Child by Bob Spitz. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. Um, if you're ever in Washington, D.C. at the American Museum of it's the National Museum of American History, um, they have a recreation of her kitchen, oh. like life size wow. setup that you can kind of walk around in. It's oh. very cool. That would be really fun. Yeah. yeah. It's a tiny, tiny little kitchen. It's amazing. Like the one in Paris? Or no, um, the one, the one that, that she used she, for her studio. show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So cool. Nice. All right. So continuing along my dark journey, (laughs) I have Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. And I bought this one as an extra in my Book of the Month Club. And it was very entertaining, very quick read. Um, I have to say, (laughs) it was described as the Golden Girls meet Kill Bill. (laughs) So if this is your jam, (laughs) uh, older women sometimes feel invisible, but that can be a secret weapon. So we have four highly trained female assassins. They are now 60 years old. They're supposed to be celebrating their upcoming retirement and have been given an all-expense-paid cruise. 
Their names are Billy, Mary Alice, Helen, and Natalie. They worked for a very mysterious organization called the Museum, <laughs> uh, which is a clandestine international organization that arranges hits on ex-Nazis, and then they move along to crime bosses, sex traffickers, you know, people you really wouldn't miss. So they kill the bad guys. They kill the bad guys. That's like the feel-good point of their job, <laughs> of killing, you know. So while we're on this crew ship, Billy happens to recognize someone that is a member of the crew, but she knows that he's a member of the firm or the museum, and... So she decides to take forth the search of his room, finds out that there's, you know, a bomb on the ship that's going to explode in less than six hours. And she begins to realize that she and the other three women might possibly be the target. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. So that's where it all just starts with a bang and starts rolling from there. So uh, I don't want to give away too much of the plot, but they do escape. Um, of course, people die. This is filled with action and lots of implausible things, but you're going along with it. It's fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have to figure out why there was a hit put on them because there's a certain protocol in the organization to protect against this, and freelancing is strictly prohibited. So they know that if there was a hit put on them, it was done at the top, you know, Mm -hmm. so they have to start looking into the directors of the organization, what is happening, um, and then start their revenge, which is great fun. So (laughs) it, it really is fun to see these women that kind of have to adapt and do things differently and then figure out the problems like, you know, going overseas because different people are in different places and some of their methods are old school and just the the culture differences with some of the new recruits for the museum mm. and the power struggles. So, um, and being a woman, that was really interesting. So the chapters are, they kind of alternate with your modern story of them trying to figure out what's happening, their revenge, with the stories of how they were recruited mm. and then some of their earlier jobs and what they kind of put up with in the field, you know, being female assassins. So it's really good. Um, it was very entertaining. I liked it. I have never read a book by this author, but I definitely would again. Um, I think she has other mystery series, so hmm. Killers of a Certain Age, Deanna Rayborn. So. Nice. I mean, that sounds like directly up my alley. Oh, it was, it was a ton of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you and I love a good, I good know. killing, so, you know. Good stabby murder book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're a little bloodthirsty. That's yeah. all right. <laughs> Um, which is a great transition because (laughs) my second book is Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. Um, And this book is about, um, so Finley Donovan, the eponymous, um, is a single mother, recently divorced. She has two small children under the age of five. Um, And she is an author. She writes thrillers murder mysteries. Um, and she has an extreme case of writer's block. So her next book is due like imminently. Um, she has no money. She's completely broke. She's always having to go to her ex-husband who is, um, getting married to their realtor. Oh, nice. And, you know, just an extra (laughs) fun little twist, um, to ask for money to like get the phone turned back on. So she's not doing great. Right. Um, And her agent is like hounding her. Where's your next book? Where's your next book? Where's your next book? So she takes a meeting with her agent um, in a Panera to talk about, you know, the plot of her next book. And as they're talking through the plot of this murder mystery thriller, the woman sitting behind them is overhearing and gets the wrong idea and thinks that Finley is a contract killer oh, no. talking Funny. about her next hit. So oh. she kind of slips a note to Finley that she has a job for Finley to do. Um, and that's where we take off. So this is, um, again, highly implausible. Like we're, we're suspending a lot of disbelief here, um, but it was 
really a fun ride. Um, Finley is just kind of like stumbling around, like bumbling her way through life um, and getting herself into increasingly ridiculous situations. Um, There are some secondary characters who are a lot of fun. Um, So I would recommend this for anyone who enjoyed um, Dial A for Aunties Mm -hmm. um, or the Janet Ivanovich, Stephanie Plum books. Mm -hmm. They have kind of that same like comic action feeling to them. Although I would say this one has maybe a little more substance behind it than the Janet Ivanovich books. Um, But yeah, so in her quest to not become a contract killer, somehow kind of sort of Finley ends up becoming a contract killer, (laughs) except not really, except kind of. Um, So there's a lot of this back and forth um, and it is a lot of fun. Um, Yeah. Highly recommend. Very entertaining. Would be a great beach read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Murders for hire. Yeah. Seems to be a theme. Yeah. Uh, so I'll share um, mm-hmm. the, my last selection, which is The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with her work, but she won the Pulitzer Prize for her debut, um, which was a collection of short stories in 2000, so a while ago. This is her first um, full-length novel. And her stories, her earlier stories are about um, immigrants from India and their American-born children and about the assimilation into American culture and about the generational differences between the tradition of the parents and then the children trying to navigate both that tradition and their newfound freedoms as American teenagers. So this book is, um, it starts with the parents and their arranged marriage in Calcutta. They moved to um, Cambridge for a position at MIT for the husband, and they have a son. And um, he is, his name is given to him based on, they, um, it's sort of a mistake, the way his, hmm. they give him a temporary name, but that they don't understand the entire um, birth certificate process. And so he goes through life with this unusual name and um, as an adult decides to legally change it. Um, But it's really about the relationship between the parents and the son Mm -hmm. and his relationships and just navigating um, his life, you know, and trying to find his identity. Um, It's, I would recommend it for anyone who who enjoys family drama, or not dramas, but family stories, um, anyone who's interested in learning more about different cultures. Uh, Are there any good family secrets? Because I love a good family secret. There's really good, like, vignettes, vignettes, about little stories. I don't know if there's any secrets, but Mm -hmm. there's, she does a very good job of writing about place and time and just sort of drawing you in so that you know the characters. I've been wanting to read her. She's been on my list. Mm -hmm. She's a very interesting author. Um, She has recently moved to Italy and learned the Italian language because Mm -hmm. she's was interested in it and um, a wrote, Renaissance woman. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. She wrote a book, uh, a collection of short, short stories in Italian, and then translated them herself mm-hmm. to English. Wow. So yeah, and her newest book is actually a nonfiction called um, "Translating Myself and Others," talking about you know the process of language and translation and writing in other languages. So that's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I remember reading The Namesake probably around the time the movie came out. Um, and I I remember liking it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of that bittersweet. I did not know thing. it was a movie until I picked up this <gasps> version really? of it. So I have the DVD oh, at home. So I'll nice. have to find some time to mm-hmm. watch it. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Betsy, for joining us this today. Was this fun. was super fun. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And I hope that um, you have a full house for your book club. Thank you. So that is October 10th, 7 p.m. in the um, Story, and, Story and Craft Room. Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome. So look for that on our website. Sign up there. Um, and please let us know whether you've read any of the books that we talked about today um, or what you've been reading, what you think about your books. 
Um, as always, since we are podcast now, I have to remind you to subscribe to our podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, and tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell the people you swap books with. Awesome. Excellent. And we will be back in the beginning of October. And we're going to be doing myths and retellings. Myths and retellings. Yeah. So we've got some good ones picked out. I think so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. And we will see you in October. Take care. Book Break is a production of the Grease Public Library, made possible through the support of the Friends of the Grease Public Library. Theme music composed and performed by Sean Gravely.